Uh, John Murphy, am I putting you on the spot? Okay, good. <laughs> He's a 28-year resident of Hernando County. He has four boys and a daughter-in-law. Um, he is the, uh, the vice president of human resources for Accuform, uh, where he also serves as a member of the executive leadership team. John serves locally on the board of directors for Jericho Road Ministries, the Greater Hernando Chamber of Commerce, and the Veronica Fund. He has previously served on the board of Impact Tampa Bay, the United Way of Hernando County, the Hernando County Housing Authority, the Christian Church in Wildwood, and the Harvest Christian Church. Do you do anything when you're not serving? John is passionate about economic opportunity, job creation, and helping organizations build a better, a better culture. When not working, um, he is either uh, serving, when he's not working or serving in the community, you can find him on a date with his wife or working out with his boys. So help me welcome John Murphy. Sophia, thank you for that very kind introduction. That actually sounded even better than when I wrote it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So I have to tell you, when uh, Nikki and Sophia first approached me about moderating this workforce summit, I was like, holy cow, this is awesome. Because this time of year, they want me to moderate a summit. Trump and Hillary must be coming to town. Heck yeah, I'll do this. This will be cool. And then I watched a couple of the debates and I thought, oh boy, I'm really glad I was wrong because that would have been a disaster. I would much rather be hanging out with you guys for the evening because this is going to be way more fun. We have um, some sessions toward the end of, of the evening. We have some question and answer. We have another speaker who's going to share a little bit about some of the uh, SunTech programs. But before we get to all of that cool stuff, we actually have a video that was put together that really emphasizes the importance and the significance of the educational and business community partnership here in Hernando County, what that looks like today, and really where we're headed with that. So we've got that video queued up and ready to go, Anthony. Barlow and I'm the Manager of Career Enhancement at Suncoast Technical Education Center. It was founded in August 2013 and it was a partnership between the Hernando County Chamber of Commerce, the Office of Business Development and the school system. Uh, business leaders felt there was a real need for a trade school, that the skills were lacking in the county and so a partnership was formed, they developed some ideas and the school district applied for a state appropriation of money which was awarded and the school opened in August 2013. There's a big, big need for technicians, not only through Florida, but throughout the whole country. We currently service all of the state except for the Miami market. And what you see behind me is an example of what we work on. This is a refrigeration rack system that runs a complete small supermarket. Uh, we are here to support SunTech 120% because of the needs of technicians that is desperately needed in our industry. Earlier this year we hired Valerie on which is one of our great associates that have worked with us this year. She's here full time to recruit service technicians and construction foremans for our refrigeration industry. Thank you Joe. My name is Valerie. I'm the recruiter here for Five Star. We have a huge need for refrigeration technicians not only here in the state of Florida but nationwide. We are located in Brooksville, Florida which is centralized in the state of Florida throughout um, the going north or south. We have 130 people that work for us. Uh, we've been in business for nine years. We do services for refrigeration for all commercial, mostly supermarkets. We do air conditioning. We do construction work. We do equipment sales. We engineer. We're always looking for qualified people. Uh, Suncoast Technical is a wonderful school to help us here in the industry bridge that gap uh, throughout the refrigeration industry. We're proud to be part of that program. Good afternoon. My name is Chip House and I'm the uh, Vice President of Operation here at uh, Illumigard, which is a division of Red Outdoor Living. One thing I want to talk to you today about is uh, the welding classification that we have here at uh, Illumigard. We've tried over the years as our business has grown to find welders can weld aluminum. It's not easy. It's uh, something you just can't learn overnight. So we uh, got with uh, Nikki Barlow from the Suncoast Technical Education and we put together a program with her help and she pretty much did all the legwork but uh, we donated four welders to get the program started. 
We also got with Nikki, she needed a, somebody to teach adult education the welders, and uh, one of our supervisors here at Limo Guard is very good. We got her certified to do the training, and that program is going on about two years now. Um, in addition to that, the local high school, uh, we're working with them, and there's about 120 some students at the local, at the sophomore, junior uh, level, learning welding, which is very good, I'm very happy with that. Hello, I'm James Thomas, everybody calls me JT. I'm the Apprenticeship Coordinator at Ironworkers Local 397 in Tampa, Florida. Uh, we cover our area up here in Hernando County, Pasco, Citrus, all the way down to um, Charlotte and Lee Counties, down by Fort Myers. And what we work here with the Ironworkers, uh, we work with SunTech, um, and with their welding curriculum, they help prepare uh, students to come to our apprenticeship. We utilize the same welding curriculum. And with that, in our apprenticeship is a four-year program, but that four-year program can be reduced down a year and a half less by utilizing the same welding and passing the test for our apprenticeship. So an apprentice and uh, on the iron workers can finish in as little as two and a half years utilizing that Suncoast Technical Welding School. In today's job market, the welding skills are very important, especially as a union iron worker. You can utilize this to become uh, welding in shielded metal arc welding, uh, MIG welding, flux core welding, gas tungsten arc welding. And all these same procedures are also taught at Suncoast Technical. And we utilize that same thing as a union iron worker. These trades are needed nationwide. Uh, throughout North America, there's a quite a shortage. Uh, there's been a skills gap for everybody going to college. And now we need those technical people to come fill those gaps. And uh, it's well-paying project jobs. Um, anywhere pay scales as little as 20000 all the way up to maybe over well over $100,000. So you listen to the video, what are the next steps? Um, you're excited about the programs that you've heard. We offer automotive, manufacturing, cosmetology, cybersecurity, AC refrigeration and heating, and a welding course. So now that I've captured your attention, what you need to do in order to get onto the SunTech ladder. Well, first of all, visit our website, www.sunteched.com. On the website, it's very user-friendly. You'll find details about each and every program and how to enroll. And enrollment is pretty simple. Phone us up, 352-797-7091 or 352-797-7018. And we can um, advise you to go and have a tour. We offer them each semester. We enroll twice a year. And you can come onto campus, have a tour of the facilities, meet the instructors, meet the current students, interact with them, ask the instructors, hey, do you cover this, this and this? Because this is what I'm interested in. Uh, talk with the current students, see how happy they are. Look at the lab environment, see if that's what you really want to do. Most people, when they come to the tours, it kind of solidifies in their mind that they really want to pursue this career. Um, our staff are very friendly, the students are very tight, they're small cohort working groups. It's a very positive, close-knit experience. Um, if you then decide you want to enroll with us, it's very, very easy. You telephone us, make an appointment, come and sit down, and we'll talk you through the next steps of enrolling, payments, and moving on with your career plan. Please visit us at www.suntechhead.com and we look forward to hearing from you really soon. How about a hand for everyone that participated in that video and put it together? That was, in Sophia's words, that was dynamic. Very, very cool. So we could play really cool videos and I could stand up here and tell you about how cool SunTech is and we could hear from some of the instructors, but really to get the best feel for the program and to have the, the most impact, it's best to hear from a student that's actually engaged in the SunTech process. So we have uh, Darren Altamari with us tonight, and Darren is a student in the SunTech manufacturing uh, program, and he's gonna come up and share a little bit with us about his experience at SunTech. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Darren, and I am a student currently enrolled at the Suncoast Machining uh, Course at the Suncoast High School. Personally, um, when I enrolled at that course, I knew nothing about machinery. I knew nothing about manufacturing. But 
my father recommended it. I said, hey, why not give it a shot? While doing so, I found out that I actually love it. And I can honestly say I like going to work for once. Um, that program has taught me so much. I, I can't speak um, enough about it. My teacher, Mr. Fry, has helped me tremendous. All the staff at Suncoast. Um, what I really like about the program has helped me so much is that they teach you everything from uh, basic layout tools to the to reading prints to uh, using the machines and maintaining your machines, which really actually helps me every day because I, I work in that field. So I'm using and learning the same machines as I use at my job. So that helps me. I'm, I'm, I'm better learner hands on. Um, but it is good because you read the book and then you go to the machine. So you get both. And it, and it really is helpful. Um, I came all the way from New York to, to take the course, uh, not, ex not knowing what to expect. And I'm thrilled that I did, honestly. Um, I, the only thing, I wish there were more kids there. I feel that a lot of people are missing out on the opportunity. There's tons of jobs, um, and I mean, it's growing daily. So, I mean, I just wish there were more people involved. Um, uh, currently at school, I'm working on the lathe, my lathe certification. You get, uh, it's called NIMS, it's National Institute of Metal Working Certificate for every operation, one for the lathe. There's, there's numerous different machines and, and grinders and, and layout procedures that you go through, but you get, you uh, will take a written test and then, you, and then you physically do the work so that, that you understand it and know how to do it. And then you'll get a certificate showing that you know how to do that, which is great for employers, of course. And, it, and to prove that it's good for employers, I came down from New York and um, while waiting to enroll in school, I was applying for jobs and could not find one and couldn't get one. I had no machining background. But, but not two weeks into being uh, enrolled in a course, I had three, four uh, job interviews. So it's funny how that works out and the course works. I've learned so much from there. I, I just, I cannot begin to tell you how much I've learned. Like, I mean, I knew nothing and I know a lot now. I, I learn a lot every day still. And I, uh, I just want, I would like more people to be involved in it. That's all. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Um, bear with me, it's the first time I've done this, so I'm not a public speaker, but I, uh, I, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk. I came straight from work, so I apologize for being dressed like this, but um, I did want to take a couple of minutes just to talk about what actually goes on in my shop and how it relates to that school, because it, it really is hand in hand. I will work at a machine at my job the same one that I studied the night before. It really is hand in hand and it works out beautifully. Um, I highly recommend the program and I look forward to graduating. I'm in my fourth uh, semester now. I have one more semester. At the end I should have seven or eight certifications. Um, milling, programming, uh, blueprint reading. I mean everything that you would use in the machining, in the machining world. So that I'm looking forward to. Um, I plan on staying local and working afterwards um, once I'm finished with schooling. So I will get myself out there and see how that works. Um, but yeah, the program I love. Uh, I can't say I can't say much more. I don't know. Any questions for anybody? Anything? What's that, sir? Oh, I work for Main Street Fabrication and Man uh, Manufacturing on Powell Road. Sorry, I meant to mention that. I'll get better at this. But uh, yeah, okay. Thank you, guys. Story that I want to share with you. It's about this happy little boy who's wearing his baseball cap and he's going out into the field and in one hand 
he's got a baseball, and the other hand, he's got his trusty old bat. And as he gets out into the field, he throws the ball up into the air. And as he leans back, he says, I'm the greatest batter in the world. And he swings and he misses. And he says, strike one. And he picks up the ball and he takes a look at it. And he throws it up in the air again. And again, he says, I'm the greatest batter in the world. And he swings again. And he says, strike two. So now he picks up his bat and he looks at it, he's making sure there's no holes in it or anything, right? So he takes the ball one more time, he throws it up in the air, he leans back, and one last time he says, I'm the greatest batter in the world. And he swings with all his might, and he misses. And he picks up the ball and he goes, wow, I'm the greatest pitcher in the world. <laughs> now that is an example of attitude, right? And not just attitude, but positive attitude. And I don't think that we could have a conversation about skills gap or, or workforce or soft skills that are required without keeping attitude somewhere in the back of our minds. And I know all of my, my HR brethren and, and kin, they all get a little cringy when you start talking about attitude. And I get it because attitude can be very, very subjective, right? And we can't measure people on things that are subjective. But I have to tell you, the reality is that day in and day out, we hire people for what they know, and then we turn around and fire them for who they are. And attitude often plays a very big part of who they are. So it's something that we do have to keep in mind, and we do have to be thinking about when we're talking about what are some of the skills that are needed, what are some of the, the soft skills in particular and the requirements for the workplace. Now, I know that you guys didn't come out here to listen to me ramble on as dynamic as I am. Um, you came here to be a part of a conversation, a discussion, right? And we certainly appreciate each and every one of you being here tonight for this discussion because I know there's probably a million other places that you could be and there's a million other things that you could do. But what we need is input. So I've got a, a grouping of questions here on my handy dandy little note cards. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to ask a question to the audience and you guys are going to either answer the question or comment on the question, or comment on someone else's comment or answer, okay? Nothing's, nothing's off the table here. Uh, Sophia's gonna be coming around with a microphone, so when we ask a question and you have an answer or you'd like to make a comment, just raise your hand and she'll bring the microphone over to you. We have people in the back of the room um, listening diligently to all of your answers and your input. We have people taking copious notes because at the end of this evening, our hope is we're going to leave here with a much better understanding of how the business community and the educational community can truly work together and partner with one another to continue to make Hernando County this awesome place to live and to work and to play. Right? We're looking for the ways that we're going to provide more economic opportunity for our young people, for our families, for the workforce who's here and the workforce who's coming more opportunity for our business leaders and our business owners. But the only way that that could happen is with your participation. So please don't be quiet and please don't be shy. We can handle controversy. So with that, I'm going to ask the first question. What are some of the trends that you're seeing in today's workforce and in what ways are you having to adapt to those trends? Trends you're seeing in the workforce and how are you having to adapt? And this is the crowd participation part, so any, any hands would be good. Sophia in the back. Can you raise your hand again? Is it Jeff? Thank you, sir. Should I stand or sit? Yes, please. Whatever you're comfortable with. I'm okay sitting. All right. <laughs> um, the trend in uh, the business I'm in is um, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Um, we're kind of like uh, the fire department. Mm. When refrigeration goes down, we have to be there. The trend we're seeing is um, uh, the younger gen generation only wants to work 40 hours. Um, so sometimes we got to fill the gap with other people um, uh, to satisfy our customers. So my generation, um, we would work whatever it took, even on Sundays. Right. 
um, this was before Publix was open, yeah, and before Walmart changed the world. But um, that's the term we say is they don't want to work more than 40 hours. I'm going to have to get with you after this because I'm not. I'm curious how you get them to want to work 40 hours. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Anybody else um, seeing any trends in today's workforce and and ways you're having to adapt to that? development specialist with SunTech. Shamil will be handling this at the room. <laughs> Teamwork. Uh, a trend that I definitely notice uh, being a young manager in my field uh, is a sense of entitlement from the younger uh, generation. Um, it seems like definitely young people feel like they deserve more than they work for. Um, you know, I was brought up to work for everything that I got and and I, I don't I think that it's it's kind of veering away from that a little bit, so yeah. So is there anything that you see you're having to do to to try and adapt to that or or kind of change that course? Uh, definitely, it takes a lot more soft skills than dealing with people from an older generation. Uh, I think that the younger people have to be talked to and, and dealt with with almost kid gloves uh, compared to the older generation where. You know, you, you could just kind of talk to them very, very harsh if you have to, and they, you know, you, you kind of take it as it is. So, thank you. Up in the front, Chip. <laughs> Valerie brings up a good point. We should say her name and her company, so. I'm Chip Allison with Limagard, but uh, you're right what you said. It's all about entitlements, and until the government runs out of money, which they never will, um, it, we got a big problem. And I agree with everything you and Joe said. Um, but I think one of the things we got to take a hard look at is automation um, is very key in going forward. And then the other thing is these 10,000 baby boomers that are retiring every day for the next 20 years. Um, 65 is just a number. And if you think about retirement, that age of 65 was put together 126 years ago by the Germans. So that, that retirement age of 65 is 165 year, or 126 years old. So I think one of the keys to look at going forward is to look at this workforce that's retiring that really can't afford to retire, doesn't want to retire. They bring a lot to the party. I know a lot of people 70, 75 are still working and doing a phenomenal job. I don't know what we're going to do with the young workforce today because you're right, it's entitlement and we spoiled them. I get that, okay? But uh, there's uh, these baby boomers that are still out there and want to work, and with some automation, they can uh, definitely help out, and then them with the young people, maybe they'll maybe learn something. I don't know, but uh, it is a problem. I, I agree with both what you and Joe said. Thank you. Alex, thank you for your response, because one of the things that they taught me in HR school was when you have gray hair creeping up the sides of your head, you can't make generalizations about younger groups, but you're in a young group, so thank you for that. <laughs> All right, question number two. Oh, we have another one. I'm sorry. Hello. If you hold the bottom button until the blue light comes on, you'll be good. Hello. Uh, I'm JT with the Ironworkers in Tampa. The big thing we're finding a lot with the newer generation is social media. Uh, you might experience it yourselves with cell phones and everything going on in your job places but the younger generation really responds to it. And so we're trying to adapt with web pages and to bring the influence in with them to get a better understanding uh, for, with the social media. And so with those web pages, they can actually um, have the interest to want to do it. And right. that's, that's what we're finding. And that's how we're adapting to the trends. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, a lot of times um, what's required is us to change the way that we communicate. Right? And that's not only with younger generations, that just goes with anybody that we're talking to. When we have different audiences, we need to communicate with them in, in different ways. All right, we're gonna move on to question number two. Um, what do you see as your workforce barriers? So like, what's holding you back when it comes to your workforce? Alex, you look like you wanna say something. So does anybody um, on a regular basis see these, these things that are in the way of making progress that they look at and say, you know what, if this barrier was removed, 
we could probably move forward a lot better, a lot more efficiently. JT? Sorry. No, don't apologize. You're, you're helping us out. Um, with, I, th I think a big trend I'm seeing a lot, because I, I work a lot with apprentices. I got 152 of them, so I have a little experience with getting the younger generation into the workforce. Um, the big thing, as far as the trend, I'm kind of losing my train of thought here. Barriers? The barriers. Um, like the old Mike Rowe video, have you, if anybody watched that about him going to the Senate and where the schools are all pushing for, you know, to go to college, get that degree. And a lot of that's creating a barrier for us to get students into the trades. And that's where, like, working with Nikki and stuff here at um, SunTech is really helping us to get those people that are interested in the trade. Right. Because just the high school students themselves, they're not so interested in it. You know, they're looking, they want that career, you know, sit in the air condition and make the big money. That's not there for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, in recent times, I don't know if any of you have seen some of the GE commercials, but GE has just been doing an incredible job of really promoting manufacturing as this cool occupation and helping parents understand why they should encourage their children to pursue manufacturing. It's really phenomenal. If you haven't seen it, you need to um, look up on YouTube some of the GE commercials that pertain to modern day manufacturing. It's, it's actually really cool. All right, let's move on to number three. So this is obviously kind of a, a diverse group of, of business and educators here. Um, the question is, are you collaborating with one another? And if you are, how? If you're not, why? So I'm going to take the silence as maybe we're not collaborating with one another. Okay. No, I think, I think we are. Um, I was sharing with Nikki, um, one of the things we try to do at LumaGuard is uh, the manufacturing day that was started five, four or five years ago. We're definitely involved in that and sponsor that. And also, so, also the uh, Leadership or Nano Business Development Day. But uh, I was telling Nikki, it was, I think it was like two weeks ago, I was having a meeting with some of my employees. And I said, oh, by the way, uh, we got manufacturing day coming up uh, October 7th and had to get moved unfortunately because of the hurricane, and then uh, Leadership uh, Development Day is coming up October 20th. Uh, at the end of the meeting, one of the employees came up to me, he goes, you don't remember me, but um, two years ago, uh, I came through Manufacturing Day, and I was here at Illumigard, and now I'm working, I just got hired, I'm in, in your drafting department. Um, the other thing we're doing is working with the schools with like Margie Burham, and I've been hiring interns with drafting. So I think it goes back to you know getting involved, right. and if you don't do that, it's it's really it's your own fault because there is plenty of people out there in the education willing to help you, yeah. but a lot of people sit back and say they can't find people, can't find that, and then you got to get involved. Yeah, I, so I agree. It's, 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 it's that simple. But I, I know it's easier said than done, and I know it's a lot of fifteen-hour days. But at the end of the day, it's it's you know you talk about attitude. I think it's bigger than that. It's about passion. If you have a passion, you will find a way. That's yeah. what it comes down to. As a manufacturer, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, um, and I can tell you from our own experience, uh, we have also been open to having groups come in, school groups in particular. Um, we've hosted a lot of the DECA programs over the years and the Manufacturing Day. And I've got a, a young man that works, um, actually works with me now in the HR department, and he just told me this story last week. He said, when I was in high school, he was at Central High School, he said, we had a field trip to AccuForm, and after the end of the day, I went home and told my parents, one day I'm going to work there. And he was, I think, maybe a junior in high school at the time. His name is Evan. And um, sure enough, about three years later, a year after he graduated, he got hired as an IT assistant. And um, he has just grown and done great. And he's expressed interest in human resources. So I started getting him involved in some training there. And today he's, he's our HR assistant. But I think the the thing um, like Chip is really expressing is that if we as business leaders open ourselves up to the community, to the educational partners, that really can pay dividends for us, right? Because we're the ones that actually reap the benefit. We're the ones that need to have this continually growing workforce. So if you're not collaborating currently, we'd strongly encourage you to, to open your doors. I see a couple of hands. Pat? Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. Go right ahead. 
Hey, John, how are you doing? I'm Good. Jimmy Lodato. Yes. I represented 17 Fortune 500 companies, what, uh, and I represented General Electric, by the way. And what they're doing, these companies are coming forward and they're looking for the workforce, but they're not looking for it, and the workforce has already been trained. They want a workforce that's into high school coming out, and what's happening is we're training them all to go to college. Like, didn't we graduate like 1,400, John? And, and 500 did not go, you know, did apply to go to college. Now, what do we do with that workforce? But General Electric is moving into a lot of areas where they're looking for that specific workforce that is trained. So I think that we need to go deeper into the VOTEC and maybe test our children in the ninth grade and bring them from the ninth to the twelfth all the way up in VOTEC education. And that way, as soon as they get out of high school, companies like General Electric, L'Oreal, Paris, you know, companies I represented would take on these, uh, these youngsters. But at the same time, the ones that we've had out in the workforce have kind of slipped away because they didn't get educated. And so now we have to bring them back in. So maybe a combination school where during the day the kids would go to that school and at night, like what we're doing now, right. but to expand it even further. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Pat Crowley, Greater Hernando County Chamber of Commerce. Um, the Chamber of Commerce has a foundation, which is the Chamber Education and Training Association. And yesterday we had a board meeting, and Nikki Barlow, wherever you are, just came onto our board. And I was really surprised to see out of the seven people who sat at the table that no one at the table knew anything about SunTech. So I think one of our biggest challenges is, is communication and chip your right. Sometimes you do have to work those 15-hour days. But I, th I also believe that we can communicate via email and, of course, um, social media and websites. So I think that everybody who sits in this room is really a partner in that and helping us get the word out about SunTech and all the other great things that are going on. But I think communication is one of our barriers and also as far as it's one of the challenges that we have as far as getting the word out to our community. Great point, thank you. Uh, Mark Johnson, Hernando County School Board. Uh, I think another barrier is opportunities. We are actively seeking intern po uh, possibilities in, in, for our students in the high school so they can learn a trade before they graduate. And then if anybody would like to establish a program, Mr. Stratton sitting in the back of the room in charge of student services, that's his bailiwick, that's what he does. And we try to match the intern programs to students to give them the education they need before they graduate, so they can get placed. We have about 40% of our graduates do not go to college. So what do we do with 40% of our graduates? We have 1,500 students last year graduating. Do the math. That's a lot of people walking around looking for jobs skills or could use better skills. And what a wonderful way to get them than to be hired by our local industry and learn on the job so they get the skills that you need to be your employee, trained the way you need them so they can work better for you. It's a win-win for everybody. Oh, sorry. Hello, everyone. I'm Lauren Jollywitz, very on staffing. And one of the ways that I collaborate with SunTech is to really get the word out in the community, like you said. It's important for companies to know that we have this education opportunity for the adults. So when I go out and I do any cold calling, I go meet a client, I always have the literature in my, um, in my briefcase so that I can tell them what's going on and how they would benefit by either collaborating or by even taking a look at the students that are in the school. And I can attest to that because when Lauren was cold, cold calling on me, she gave me SunTech literature. And, and we love you, Lauren. Thank you for doing that. I'm Joe with Five Star Refrigeration. Um, I'm not sure where to start. Um, our industry is 20,000 people short in, in the United States. And this trend is going to go up to 25,000 by the year 2020. I have a full-time recruiter. Uh, we don't get any applicants. Where are the people that want to work? I think that it is communication, um, and it really needs to start at the high school level. Somehow, we got to get in front of these students to give them an option besides college, uh, trade school. If you Google supermarket refrigeration schools, see what you come up with. There's like maybe two in the country. So our industry has done a really bad job um, of training. The unions have done a pretty good job. But so if you go in some areas um, that are union-based, they've had their apprenticeship programs, and um, they've done a pretty good job. And I, I was in the union for 10 years. So that's kind of where I started my training. So if you don't have an apprenticeship program, trade school, um, communications, promoting it, 
to to really where you, uh, a technician, my top technician made $110,000 last year. It's a pretty good wage, right? <laughs> so um, it's, it's, it's out there. It's just um, I don't think the public, you know, whoever you are, knows about the opportunities. And <clears throat> like I said, as a full-time recruiter, we might get one or two applicants and then sometimes they don't pass the background check and we have zeros, so it's really frustrating. My business can't grow without people. You know, we sell people and we sell services and materials. So um, they're just not out there, at least in this state, so um, it's very frustrating. Yeah, thank you. JT? Yeah. Do we have a second mic? We could just leave it with him. I was just gonna just switch kidding. sides with Jamil. <laughs> Uh, backing up exactly what he said about having um, the students and getting the word out there to work together. I mean, we have a great group here. Uh, we have political officials, school school board, everything going on here. I mean, maybe something, just an idea. I've grown up, I lived here in Brooksville my whole life. You know, I, I work in Tampa, but I'm, I'm from this area. Like, Jimmy's here with us. If we could do a, some kind of job fair for the high schools or something that we all could get and participate in and get that word out to these students, you know, especially for those juniors and seniors that are coming out. I mean, just an idea, maybe, no. no. Mr. Lodato. That's a great idea. John, I, I did the half cent sales tax here and I uh, had a chance to speak to a lot of youngsters as this gentleman right on the other side. And the, I seem to have uh, the same question answered all the time. They feel the companies don't really care for them. The companies are really not out to help them. So they've kind of turned their backs. Years ago, with our old generations, companies would take care of their employees, and so they always had benefits. Now, a company like yours, you see you're out here showing people that, hey, I want to employ, and I want to show you that we're going to engage you and we're happy to be with you. But there's a lot of companies that are not doing that, and that's what's causing a problem. So I think in the industry, we need to change the mentalities to go back to the method of companies caring for their employees. And once the youngsters really feel that they're engaged, they're going to jump into it and start you know, engaging us. Yeah, and I think, you know, to your point, there's a lot of companies that really do care. I don't know that they're doing a sufficient job of getting that message out and helping people to understand that. Um, I, I like the comment, that, uh, that comments there. Uh, I think that's about your mindset. If you have a positive attitude, it works both ways. You've got to be a company that offers a lot of opportunities. The theme for my company this year is the power of positive thinking. So if your mindset is, hey, I'm going to go to work, achieve something, if you work for a company that's going to give back, you know, the cream will raise to the top and you will be rewarded for those hard works. You reap what you sow. So to me, it's the mindset uh, and the attitude of a person that wants to succeed. Right. Great. Thank you. All right, so let's move on to another question, um, and this is really more related to skill. Um, which soft skills do you wish new hires had on day one? Like, which soft skills do you wish they were just coming to you with already? Uh, I'm feeling like this side of the room might need to <laughs> add something. <laughs> Stephanie from AccuForm. Um, one of the things that we're challenged with it, with um, new hires is their ability to come to work on time and be there every day. So I would say that would be our one that I wish they would come come to the door with. Thank you. I mean, we've touched on it several times. We talk about that entitlement attitude, and it's not just getting to work on time. It's actually putting in the effort to do the job. And you're there. Because they think they're entitled to the paycheck without really doing any of the, any of the labor. Yeah. yeah, good point. Trades are something that you have to have a passion about. You have to want to do it. Sometimes it's dirty. It's physical work. You come home really tired and wore out. But you have to really want to be doing that trade to do good at it. Right. You know, I've been in air conditioning since 1981, and now I'm teaching the class 
on it because I took a class like this in high school. And I love doing it. And I love showing people how to do it. I think it's a great trade. But that's old school, I call it. Mm -hmm. You know, when a younger person can just sit on their phone and look up Google to find an answer to something, they're not getting involved, like having to go through a class or a course and put the time in to make the effort to do the, the job right. Right. Yeah, so, you know, we're battling, I think, this cultural phenomenon that is um, social media, and it is information accessibility, and it is ease and convenience. And I, my job is actually not to provide commentary to you here, but from what I'm hearing, it sounds to me like one of the things we really need to be teaching these young people is work ethic and the value of working hard. Whether it's, you know, the greatest job in the world or not, we really need to get back to teaching a solid work ethic if you want to continue to grow and succeed. Mr. Gudu, Cybersecurity. One of the things I've seen over the years, I've been in secondary ed on and off for over 10 years, is confidence. Students and employees, employers, they don't have confidence when they walk in the door. So it's not, a, it's not in their right or to be there on time or to be that. And that's one of the soft skills I would like to see encouraged throughout that four years in high school and in secondary ed, that they understand they're going to start at a rung and a ladder and then build a confidence in themselves even before they walk in that interview. Um, for that. Yeah, that's a very good point. The, the confidence issue is very important, as you said, and I think that's a two-way street. It's instilling the confidence in the new hire, the new employee, the student coming in. But it's also got to come down from the, from the companies back down to give them that confidence, to, to uh, give them accolades when, when they do something, complete a task successfully, give them the chance to express themselves. I think a lot of times uh, new employees are suppressed and pigeonholed and put in a little box and, and they don't know how to get out of it. And I think that's a problem also on, on the corporate end. And we, we, gotta, we need to look at both sides of what we're doing. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to the next question. So what does training look like for your new hires? Maybe, you know, the first 90 days, the, the first six months, the first year. What type of training programs are being offered in your companies and in your organizations for new hires? Joe? Depends on the qualification of the person that comes to work for us. If they have zero qualifications, just say out of high school or they just been floating around, we put them in the construction department. So we start a training program on uh, building supermarkets or convenience stores. So running pipe, learning how to weld and uh, braze and set cases. So it's about a three or four year program. If they come from a trade school that has um, some skills, then we have developed a training room ourselves um, that elevates them to another level. Great. Excellent. Up in the front, Chip. So what Joe said, it's absolutely the employee. Uh, most of the jobs we'll put with a, uh, an experienced person, and we can train them pretty much within a week or so to do the job. We also have, um, similar to Accuform University, we have Lumagard University. We set up years ago for welding and take people and be, learn how to become a C, then a B, then an A welder in different pay grades. But uh, I think the most important thing we try to do is, because uh, we have full-time and we have temporary employees at Lumagard, is when the new employees come in, uh, we have them wear an orange vest for um, 30 days. So everybody knows that that person's new. We gotta make sure we look out for their safety, make sure if they're doing something, uh, help them. And then uh, we have the other people on each shift, we call them safety coaches. They wear a different vest where they're there to help the supervisors just make sure everybody comes to work and goes home with 10 fingers and 10 toes. And Because it depends on the industry and uh, 
just in manufacturing, I think it's like 350 people die every year. And you look at some of the accidents, it's, it can happen anywhere. Yeah. So you really got to look at safety. Is, uh, and I know this year with the worker comp cost in Florida going up 14.5%. So yeah. it's a whole other uh, game we're going to be playing. But, uh, you know, it's, it's all about the communication and the individual and looking at what they can do. And we, we team them up with an employee that can teach them for yeah. the most part. I love the idea of identifying the new employees for a month so that way everybody knows, hey, I need to go and help this person right. rather than just kind of walk past them. And, yeah, they uh, stick out like a sore thumb because yeah. it's a big orange vest. It's like, <laughs> oh, a new person. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. I mean, you, you, know? I mean, you got 300 people. It's, uh, it's, it's easy to get lost in the shuffle. Yeah. I might borrow that from you. Thanks. Anybody else want to talk about their training? Pat? Oh, my name's Alex from AccuForm as well. I'm with all these guys. Um, so one thing that's very important to AccuForm uh, for new employees is to give them the proper feedback required. Uh, so if, if somebody is making mistakes and they're not progressing like they should, they have the right to, to know that they're not working up to your standards. Um, if that's not something that you're doing, I would, I would definitely say that that would, that would be beneficial. <clears throat> Yeah, we call that having grown-up conversations. We like to treat, you know, we, we say we hire grown-ups, and we like to treat them like grown-ups. So if they're not meeting an expectation, let's have a discussion about it rather than just ignoring it for, you know, 30 days or 60 days and then cutting them loose because they didn't work out. I just have a quick question. Again, Pat Crowley with the Greater Hernando County Chamber of Commerce. Do we offer apprenticeship programs at any of the manufacturers here in Hernando County? And if we don't, is that something that we could really look at and, and put into play? I think that a mentoring program or an apprenticeship program is something that you could work with a lot of the high school students to see if manufacturing is the way that they'd like to go. And, uh, you know, and at least they come into a company with the knowledge that this is the business that I really would like to get into. So I don't know if that's something that we have in play. Uh, Mark Johnson, the uh, school board again. We have a, and a, sitting in the back burner, we're developing a program with AccuForm just to do that, to bring our students in and let them learn the skill set so when they graduate high school, they can fall or walk right into a job and have the opportunity to advance. Am I right, John? Yeah, and we, we've, um, we're kind of in the early stages of having put something into place already with AMP skills, and we're, we're kind of using that to test the waters and see how that works out for us as we look to broaden it and, and make it more available. So it's something that you're creating a, you know, a template for that you could actually take and put into other businesses? Right, that's what we're hoping. Yeah, we, at uh, Limogard, what we do is we look internships. We work with Margie Burham on the drafting because that's something we need and we'll hire the, the students so uh, we've got two right now and um, some of them will work second shift because they're going to school today we'll work their hours and we're flexible there but like uh, you, you guys are doing the AM skills we think that it's kind of the future I know it's still very new and we got to work through that but uh, I think the bigger piece is the manufacturing day um, bringing students over and then when we do that we tell them you can come back anytime afterwards and have one-on-ones to this is what we do this is what manufacturing is about this is what Illumigard is about um, but I think the AMP skill is, could be, if we give it to sport, could be the, the thing that we need because all the technical part, the programs in the past where they had the technical training, um, all the aerospace companies, they, they got rid of those programs years ago. And now, 30 years later, all these people are retiring and there's not this, uh, this workforce anymore that, that went through the trades. So AMP skill hopefully will fill that void like they did. You know, it's, it's based off the guild program in Germany is what it is. And I think it will work. It's just it's like everything else that takes time. But um, I think it's involvement because um, I hear all the time they don't have people. But what are you doing going out? Are you running away from the problem or are you running to the problem? But you can sit back, anybody can sit back and complain. But I mean, that's not going to get anything done. But uh, that's what we do at Lumagor. All right. We're going to wrap this up with the final question here. Um, how willing are you as employers, as organizations, how willing are you to partner with the educational providers? Uh, 
I'd say we're very willing. It's just finding that fit uh, because we have some age restrictions in, in, in our industry. Right. So it's finding that fit and, and how, to, how to bring it, how to meet bo with both sides expectations. Right. And, and I think that's a big part of, of the goal for tonight, right, is to try to start understanding, you know, what do we need from them? What do they need from us? How can we continue this dialogue and, and ensure that we are able to work together if we're willing to work together? From an education point of view, it's important for us, in, in, in both in SunTech and in the school district, to know where we're failing, what skill sets we haven't provided the students so they can succeed in your business. And those are the kind of dialogues that actually help us so we can hopefully tailor curriculum, which is something I know nothing about, people in the back of the room do, uh, so we can actually give you a better product. Because in the school system, our product is a ready workforce, if you think about it. And the more input we have, the better we can do our job. And we can give you those employees you need with the specific skill sets that you need. And if we can't provide specific skill sets, if they have the basics, your individual training programs can fill those gaps and teach the students what they need to succeed in your businesses. Yeah, and I think Mr. Weaver is, is capturing a lot of that already tonight, and um, as we move into the breakout sessions that are going to be a little bit more uh, specific to the, to the different categories, hopefully we'll have some more of that conversation. So, any other comments before we close up? How about a hand for our microphone, ladies? Thank you. And really, a hand for each of you, because we, again, appreciate your participation. We appreciate you, you coming out, and we appreciate the conversation and everybody getting involved. We've heard a lot of good comments, a lot of good feedback, and I think we have a lot to build on uh, from this point forward. So a hand for all of you participating. So if you are staying for the breakout sessions, and actually, we're going to barricade the door, so you have to stay for those. Just kidding. Um, the way it's going to work is in this main room, um, we're going to have the automotive in the main room area. And there's actually little paper signs on some of the tables, so you'll know exactly where they're going to be. Um, automotive, manufacturing, cyber, and cosmeto cosmetology will all be staying in this main room. Just look for the little sign on the table so you'll know where to go. Um, welding is actually going to be down this hall. There's a, another little room in there. Um, so you're going to go in there. And then HVAC AC is going to be at the back of this room, uh, number 112, the rear portion of 112. And manufacturing, I think I said manufacturing, but mistakenly, manufacturing will be in the front portion of 112. So if you have any questions, I'm sure Sophia will be happy to answer those.